the, the question I have, I kind of want to get into a little bit, um, is your Kundalini awakening experience? Because I have a couple questions about Kundalini. So just real quick, I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about what that was like for you, what happened, what changed? Sure. Uh, well, for me, um, the Kundalini that I experienced, it was really tough because it was a lot of information was coming to me um, at once, let's say, and really fast because um, I programmed within my DNA and I got this from my guides, a, a specific wake up call, sort of like a wake up call that will activate um, the DNA or the Kundalini energy at a de determined point, you know, in, in space and time in my, in my lifetime. So 16, because, or 15, let's say, because it's an end of a cycle of energy, it was the perfect, um, let's say, um, age for me to initiate this, this, this process, you know, some people choose numbers that are specifically the end of a cycle or the beginning of a cycle, and they do it in purpose. It was um, the perfect, let's say, it's the perfect time to initiate such um, awakening. So for me, it was 15, personally, and it was a really rough experience because what I experienced is a lot of information coming to me like really fast, you know, all, all, a lot of um, race in, in awareness and intuition and psychic abilities, uh, awakening, having precognitive dreams, being able to manipulate even sometimes like the space around me, like in terms of like the electromagnetic field, like it could be the weather, but that is directly connected with the idea of how the cell was beginning to understand that they create their own reality. So they are more connected to the phenomena of synchronicity, you know, and that's how you eventually can align yourself, not manipulate the, the external, but align yourself with the external reality that is reflective of the changes within. And I will also have a race of creative energy, sexual energy, because that is mostly uh, the, the, the um, beginning of the Kundalini. And you start to be... Um, to be merging with aspects of yourself that are coming from different places. For example, activations from Andromeda and from, or, or from Acturus or from Atlantis, you know, from different incarnations. And they are will, mer will merge in and activate in parts of the self, but also karmic cycles of energy. And that's where, that's how it connects. Um, that's how it connects with the story of the Kundalini, the negative experiences in which I will get PTSD and I will get these memories. That will be a projection, like a direct projection of my Kundalini energy, reaching out certain energetic blockages uh, along the spine of chakras that were, um, let's say, yeah, like vibrational blockages that were vibrating in fear, that were maintaining my chakras unbalanced. So when the energy was coming um like upwards in um towards the spine you know it was let's say uh bringing into my awareness these unconscious aspects of myself that will represent itself in the surface and so on uh, and on and on you know like this so until i reach a point in which it is integrated so it can ascend farther in in you know in the spine curious what you think kundalini is and what you do with it now that it's kind of sounds like it's more under control Sure. Kundalini is this um, ever-present um, creator energy within oneself. If you observe the Caduceus, it is basically the geometrical representation of this energy. When you see the two serpents, uh, or even in the DNA, you can find it because it's all, um, you know, about harmonics. It's all making that reference, making that... Um, yeah, like represented on um, the idea of harmonics. If you see the caduceus and these two serpents, um, spirit, you know, like spiraling around this, you know, like going all up around the spine, intertwining with each other, those two energies are representative of the divine masculine and the divine feminine within you. And that's why it is said that there is a third strand when you that you can't achieve when you get into the, when you ascend towards the four density, because it represents in theory, the neutrality, 
the level of integration between the two dualities, between the two poles, you know, of consciousness. So then you have the um, that really small sphere in the caduceus that represents the pineal gland, and it just um, um, expresses how these two energies intertwining with each other and going up around the spine which is the alignment of the chakras, which are ideas within your consciousness, they can activate this pineal gland and can achieve, um, let's say, a state of higher awareness or get to be, get your brain, train your brain or, or tune your brain, let's say, into a, into a um, harmonic receiver of higher dimensional frequencies and information. And then the two wings um, that are in the two sides of the sphere represent the right and the left hemisphere. They are, of course, representative at the same time of these two dual energies, which is the masculine and the feminine. And the reason why they have been represented with wings is because it's making a reference to how we humans have angelic DNA. So the activation, in a sense, of these two energies and these and the DNA will be the activation of our angelic consciousness, our angelic wisdom. I do perceive that duality itself is a powerful uh, aspect of consciousness because the idea of duality is the idea of oscillation. If you observe a wave, for instances, you have the oscillation going on up and down, up and down, and it exists basically because there's an up and down. Otherwise, the wave wouldn't be a wave and it wouldn't be anything vibrating, so it will be anything. So the idea of duality itself, I believe that is a powerful aspect of, of consciousness that makes it so that it exists. Because without that duality, we wouldn't have anything into awareness, into consciousness. For instance, structure and creativity are two opposite poles, but without a meaning, a structure cannot make sense of anything, cannot just create anything. And without a structure, a meaning doesn't make sense of itself. So as long as there is a integration of those dualities, that is the unifying force that you're talking about, then duality is fine. The pol polarity is another thing. Polarity means that those dual energies has been polarized, that has been disintegrated. I was just going to mention how the structure of existence um, is um, um, arranged so that there is experience, there is an exploration of consciousness, there is um, beingness, you know, there's something. God is the all that is. And so God, by being everything, it's that unified um, essence of no, no duality, no polarity, no, no even integration between the two, no anything, just everything. It is also paradoxically nothing at the same time because it has no mirror to look at self, no oscillation, no way to reflect itself so that it can create a, let's say, sense of self or individuality, which is, is, not, which is not the ego. Individuality is a general thing as to the self, you know. So that's why God itself fractalized itself into infinite personalities of its own or individual selves so that there, God will have an opportunity to be someone, to be something and vibrate. Otherwise, the point is everything and nothing at the same time. But when there is this polarity, this duality and this third element in between, which is the integration of the two, then even though there is an oscillation of polarity, there can be an integration of that so that the experience can be aligned with that unity, that unified uh, idea, you know. So the point is not to cancel the dualities. The point is just to harmonize it so that there is emotion, there is beingness, there is identity, but at the same time, it is in a way that it is harmonic, that it is aligned with, with oneness. Wow, that was beautiful. That's, that's pretty profound stuff. Um, I'm curious, like, there's so much we could talk about with God and... Uh, is this um, infinite fractals that he divided himself into, is that like all the consciousness in the world, all the people, the plants, the all the beings are uh, an aspect of God? And um, is there is there a meaning to our life? Like what is, what do you think the, the is there a purpose? Uh, is it just to 
uh, like resolve karma or is it just like to experience existence? Yes, the, the point is to experience, as I said, an individuality, a self, so that we can have an experience of beingness, of existence. And so how the purpose then is to be yourself, not to be yourself in terms of like, um, as the mantra that we're repeating one and, you know, every time on, on our civilization, our society, to be oneself in all aspects, in all different meanings, let's say. To reintegrate yourself with your truest self. So, for instance, if you find negative beliefs about yourself that are not, then that means that whatever you're holding on to as a belief, it's like a lie about yourself that you are believing when in fact it is not your true self. So, the path towards becoming who you truly are is letting go of those self truths that you have created to those sorry, and truths, you know, about yourself, that you're believing, that you're holding on to, so that you can become who you truly are. And by becoming who you truly are and holding on to only the positive beliefs, the positive truths and ideas, then you can become more of what you are, which is the love and the light and, you know, all of these unity consciousness um, ideas. So is this uh, the path of the soul or the spirit uh, of the fractal of God consciousness that we're, we experience these darker, denser realities, and then we return back to God as we unveil our identity, our ego, as we pull off the layers of belief and go back to the light. Are we just kind of going back to God in like a loop or something like that? Um, in a sense, it's, we are all God. So going back to God means going back to the self, to the truest self. So let's say that you have a signature frequency that is made of um, all the aspects, all the beliefs that are positive to you, therefore that it is who you are. And when you in this physical matrix adopt, um, let's say, these ideas, they get filtered by the ego. So they get reversed in your experience. They get polarized. So, for instance, if one of your principal ideas of your frequency signature is that you are a good, um, I don't know, creator, a good singer, a good artist, you like to be an artist, then if you have a specific, um, if you haven't achieved harmony with that idea of the self, when you filter your, that energy in this physical matrix through your ego, through your own fears, then you're going to experience in a polarized perspective. So you're going to be believing, holding on to the belief that you're not a good artist, that you're not a good, you know, creator of art, you know. And so the path will be in this case to let go of that belief, to find a way to let go of that belief and become who you truly are before you took, um, you know, you become attached to that lie about yourself. And that way you will become who you truly are. This is not something that you do by mistake. Um, most of the times when you polarize that energy of yourself in an, in, the, in an opposite way, it's because it is such the core, let's say, essence of your signature frequency that your higher mind will have, um, let's say, planned that you will experience that po polarized version of it so that you will integrate consciously the idea of who you truly are. Because otherwise, if you wouldn't experience the negative side of it, you won't have awareness of it since the beginning. So sometimes, in a sense, most of the times, those things are planned so that you already um, you go to that path, unless it's already integrated, you know, from other lifetimes or experiences.